Okay, guys, I'm here today with Roger Grace, a huge honor for me at Roger Grace School. Guys, Roger is well known as the greatest Jiu Jitsu athlete in the world in the history of Jiu Jitsu. He's the one who submitted everybody from the mount on every single world's division and open class. So I'm super happy to be here. And guys, today Roger is going to show us here how to do the perfect cross choke from mount. And I'm, that's something that I always wanted to learn. And uh, I wish I had learned that when I was competing on Roger. But anyways, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So usually, like to put a, because the, the moment that you attack someone, the, the, you know, you have to be careful not, you know, to get taken out the mouth. So usually there's two things that I worry about. The bridge, of course, okay. and the elbow scape to put them back in the guard. Okay. So first I have to be high enough that it's not easy for you to get your elbows in. So okay. this cannot happen because the moment that you that happens, I have to stop my attacks and right. I have to deal with this. Right. So if I stay in a, in a low amount, which any time you can get the elbow in, you can stop my attack at any time. So usually, you know, it's it's a matter of millimeters, if you realize, you know, it's, but I stay high enough in a way that, for example, now, it, your elbow won't fit in there. Yeah. You need to gain space first. Yeah. So as long as I can keep myself here, now I'll start attacking. Because then there's one last thing to worry about. It. I will always have to worry about bridging, regardless of what I'm trying to do, because you just need to lift your hips up, right? It's not, I cannot stop that, but I can stop that by staying high enough. So usually the first, the first arm that you know you put it in, you know, this, I mean, we can go in details, like it's, I think two things that makes me get the first arm, the first arm, not relative easy, but easier. Yeah. First, I don't try to make a grip before. I try to get my whole arm in through. Usually it's a person, when the people, when they try to get the arm in, they, they grab, yeah. and then they wanna slide the grip in. Yeah. I find that very hard. So usually I get my whole arm in, you know, when I feel my wrist, my, in my forearm is kind of on your neck, now I worry about getting the grip in. Placing the fingers. Placing, you know, getting the grip in. As long as your, your hand is not there, even if the person's hand is there, it's easier for me to move and place my wrist in. You know, when, when people have, that their arm is still there, but my arm is all the way through, then my second hand, I will remove, and then I keep it tight enough, because now it's hard for you to find the space to, to get the arm in, and then, I get my grip in. The moment that I get the, as I'm getting the, my, you know, my, my grip in, my right arm in, in this case, my body always has to stay slightly to my left because that's what I'm vulnerable to get bridged out. So I compensate by keeping my body here. So if you try to bridge, you'll be, you won't be able to take me. And then it's, you know, you can start, you might expose your arms or, or even though you, you, you might try to go, but you're not going to drag me with you. So if I bridge for any side, this side I have the arm. Okay. So it's, you can bridge as much as you want this side. I'm not, I don't have to worry because I have, this arm is free. Okay. My right arm, when, I'm, when I get the grip in, my concern is just that side. Okay. Because my arm is stuck. Okay. Right, it's trapped in a way. Like I'm yeah. dropping, when I make a grip, I cannot use the, arm, the hand yeah. to put on the floor. So I have to compensate by coming here. This, I, you know, I help getting the grip in, but that is free anytime I want. Okay. So I don't worry about getting bridged this way. I got worried about getting mm -hmm. that way, which I don't no longer have the arm. And the, 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 when I when I establish the arm, when I feel like the arm is in, is deep enough, you know, have a good control, the moment to attack the other arm, then is I need to drop even lower to get the second arm in, because. If you realize the more, the lower my head goes, the higher my hip goes. Yep. So there's less impact when you try to bridge. And that will you bring my forehead to the floor, then it works almost like a hand. Yep. And I, you know, I bring my body even more over to the other side, which my, you know, it places my head on the floor. And if you try to bridge over your shoulder, that happens. And then I, I will block the bridge here. Because you might rotate under me, but you, I'm not gonna rotate because I'm, I'm, I'm being stopped by my forehead. Yep. So if you insist, you're just gonna give me your back. And that's when, you know, I stay very low. So with the second hand, it's, it's, it's harder to go four fingers in. Because the moment that I have one arm in, you're gonna use both of your arms to defend that side. 
Because yeah. this is already, yeah. I'm already through your defense. Yeah. But so that is what your concern now, not to get the second hand. Yeah. So one hand I have to fight against two hands, which is very hard. So to get the four fingers in, the angle has to come this way. There's no other angle. And I find very difficult to go under my arm. Okay. Like I could never really master the two going under. I always go over. So to get the four fingers in, I find hard. Because to make a grip on your collar here, that's exactly where you place in both of your hands. That's when I go behind your ear with my thumb. Because it's very difficult for you to defend the collar very deep. Because for you to defend the collar, you have to really get there with your hands. And with the moment that you go there, you start exposing your arms. Because, especially this one, it, you know, it's the cross hand that defends the choke, yeah. right? So you'll be the cross hand that's defending that the most. This yeah. is a help, but that's the main yeah. hand that put the palm is facing the thread. Okay. So if you try to go deep behind your ears, your elbow is exposed now, so now you're giving the arm. And now you can attack my arm. Exactly. Oh, that's so ideally, for you to get there, you expose the arm. So I need to keep the arms, elbow slightly low. And now this is a big And there's always a gap, see? The, yeah. The, the space behind the ear, yeah. I can always reach. And by reaching, when I get past your hands, like, you know, the, the fact, put your hands in a way to, put it to different. When I go behind, all I need is to get past your fingers. See, my wrist, because now when I rotate, I clean oh, you clean my fingers. Yes. Yeah, that's incredible. Because if I don't get past, if I, I rotate over, yeah. and then I still have your hand. So I need to get my wrist, like I place in the end of your oh, fingers. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Now, whatever tight you try to keep your fingers into your own head, this will always That's clear. incredible. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That's why I'm usually more successful with the thumb in, because it's much harder to oh. move this way, to pass in both hands. Oh, no, this is one detail that if somebody yeah. doesn't watch you teaching, they would never figure that out, right? It's yeah. almost like invisible. Yeah, it's, it's hard for you to understand exactly where the grips are going why. Yeah. You know, like why. The, 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 ideally, that's a why for everything. Yeah. Everything yeah. you do should have a reason to be yeah. there. You cannot yeah. be just random. Yeah. So it's you know, to get past both hands. You know, is is in the back. So it's like you know, like ideally you think you you defend your right. Let's see yeah. if I got my hand and like you defend your neck. Put your hands exactly. But see that when I get the grip, I go behind your defense. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's a place behind where people expect. To have a grip on if i go right in the back so i have a solid grip then oh. man that's amazing that's and then when amazing. you when you get towards that end there's no way to escape anymore right it it's it's harder when i when i it's, it's about my body positioning because if i can't get my right hand well placed and i can establish to keep my body here without using of the hands because that's one main not mistake of people but where my body is, it will dictate your ability to throw me over. Okay. Because you, you cannot get your elbows in, right? Because yeah. I'm yeah. too high. So it's, yeah. it's all about the bridge. Yeah. So when, and every time you lift your hips, you project my body over. Yeah. So there's two places that I feel very safe, you know, that you cannot throw me. Yeah. If I sleep very tall, yeah. like if I'm this, this tall, you can bridge as much as you want. You're yeah. not going to roll me. Yeah. Because you're not going to bring my head down. Okay. If you bridge, yeah, my right. hips will go forward, yeah. but not my head. But the moment that I'm bringing my body forward, that's when I'm vulnerable. Okay. That's when it's either all the way up or all the way down. Anywhere in the middle, I'm vulnerable. Okay. So when I attack, that's why I compensate by bringing my, my body this way where I have the free hand, which I will need the free hand if you bridge. But the moment that I want to choke, then my body goes all the way down. And you keep yourself low. Because, very low. Because now if you try to bridge, I, I stop. Yeah. I, I don't need my hands. Because here, you know, I'm, I'm low enough that, that right at the beginning of your movement, I will block my body from going further. Yes. So I, you won't get the momentum to yeah. throw me. Straight away, I'm blocked. And then, you yeah. know, it's just... Oh, and I'm noticing that your feet is almost like a duck here. Stuck yeah. on my both legs all the time. It's it, because I have to stay attached to you, yeah. to your body, right? I cannot disengage. Yeah. It's so the way that I feel to stay detached most is my feet always connected to your yeah. body, not my knees. My hips can come up, you know, if you push me, 
Yeah. But my feet can always bring me back. Okay. And like like bridge, just bring your hips up. That never happens. Okay. Now I lose all attachment to you. Okay. Because the fact that I'm sitting on you, you can easily push me off. Yeah. My knees can open up. Yeah. You know, you, you can get my hips up if you push me off. You open up. Yeah. But not the feet. Okay. The feet what keeps us attached. So even if I bridge or feet follows, it's, it will always follow. If I okay. lose that, I'm losing my control. Okay. Over my, you know. And another question. What do you do to, so you know, you, first thing you did, very first thing, you move yourself up to make sure that my elbow can't close, right? What do you do when, with those guys that they kind of like slide up yeah. and they position themselves again? Like if that happens, then I have to stay very low okay. and I'll start again. Okay. This is, let's say, my start, my start point. Okay. Because if I stay low, and my, then my feet is under your hips. Okay. Because now you have old enough yeah. space, but you can push my knee, but my feet will still stay attached yeah. to your Now body. it's too far. Like, yeah. now my elbow escape doesn't make sense anymore. And the fact that I'm holding your head, you have to deal with the Ezekiel. This is, yeah. So your Which hands, is the one you caught me, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your hands cannot really separate from your neck in a way that you're going to focus in pushing me because this will come. Okay. So your elbows can go, but you, your elbows will touch my leg, but my legs, are, you know, you cannot push them further. I got it. Because now you have the Ezekiel. Ezekiel there. I got it. Which automatically you will get me up and then I'll come back. Okay. And the way to not let you jiggle your body up, because you need to push my legs. Yep. So usually my hands are beside your, yep. your arm. Yep. Because if you try to get your elbows on, on my leg, I, you know, I hold them together. Oh, so, so you do that, you yeah. use that as well. I block you from getting your, your arms in my leg. So when you are in this posture and you are not attacking? My hands are always here. Oh man, that's amazing. My hands are always here. No, that's the incredible. The moment that I let go one hand, I keep the other one and then to get the first that's hand. That's incredible. Because for you to go to that, that, you know, then you can only use one hand. You're not going to push your, yourself up Got it. with one leg. Got you it. can do with, you know, with both, but not with one. So this is, you know, stay the end. But then by the time I'm, I'm, I'm dropping, if you get, if you start pushing me too much you know, by the, I, while I'm getting one hand in, then you're almost sacrificing your defense. Because you, 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 for you to do that, you will ignore my attack and then worry about pushing my body low. And that's when. The other one comes. That's when. Now, look, I can go four fingers in. Okay. Because your arms are not there. Oh, okay. yeah. But if, if my arms are here, then I go four fingers in. Man, that's incredible. No, yeah, that's incredible. Like, how many, like, almost like invisible details are in the position that nobody's seen. And uh, which. I mean, most times that's what happens as I'm getting one hand in because I'm quite high in the mount. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you feel very comfortable. You have no space for the arm. My body, the body's there. Yeah. So your arms naturally yeah. start pushing. You know, you're trying to recover some sort of position in the mount. But you know, as I'm putting the hand in, you cannot do both at the same time. You cannot defend the hand and try to establish a better position. That's when it's easier to yeah. mount. Oh, Hojo, and last question, and I already know the answer because I already asked you that before, but how did you develop that? How did you train in order to have this mount that nobody can escape? Like, I mean, you already told me once, so... But yeah, it's, it's, it's practice, you know, it's, it's, it's years of practicing the mount. I think, uh, you know, we had this conversation before, not many people, they get the, the, the effort and the time to, to practice the mount. Yep. They got maize in the garden. I mean, if you real, if you think of, you know, let's say, you know, your week or year, your month or year, it's same. almost the same how you train, right? The yep. same you train that yep. in the week to reflect the month and reflect the year. So how much you develop into other aspects of your game, yep. in, apart from the training itself, sparring and guard. Yep. Yep. It's very small, you know, yep. people, they... Hum, yeah, are you many, passing or are you or are exactly, like 80% of the time? Exactly. Yep. So people, they spar a lot, which yep. they just keep practicing whatever they, are, they do well. You yep. don't, it's hard to develop uh, the technique sparring yep. because you don't get to practice over yep. and over again. And if you, if you don't go specific from the mount, I mean, how many hours in the mount you spend the last month? I got it. I yeah. mean, almost yeah. people, almost none. So how come you wanna? So every single day you would do specific from every the mount? Every single training, almost everything, I'll say 90% of my training is always specific training. 
all specific from every position mainly side control mountain back those is the view yeah. because it's attacking and defending always both it's right. always equally on top and equally on the bottom and and it has to be five minutes each because five minutes attacking from the mount, five, five minutes, minutes defending, five minutes attacking from the side control. Teacher, yeah. I got it. So and then if you get the submission, you will start. I got it. If and if you guys escape it? And escape back again. Only yeah. from that. Nothing more. So oh. if you press him mount, you try my leg in the half, I will stop. Okay. If you try to turn again your back, stop and start okay. again. Anything else that is not mount. No, that day that we had that conversation, I left thinking a lot about it because it's not something that's very hard to do. It's yeah. 30 minutes per day. Yeah. We're not asking them to yeah. train like three yeah. hours per day, but if you yeah. do that 30 minutes every single day for a and lifetime in Jiu Jitsu. You will change your, your game in those uh, No, that's incredible. Your I attack. wish I had learned that before. And your defense is the same thing, but at the same time when you're top, oh. you're practicing your attack, in the bottom, you're practicing defense. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy to skip side control. It's not even then, it's not even now. You know, people yeah. think, oh, yeah. when I get better, side control is easy. It's not easy. Yep. For me, I don't find easy at all okay. to escape. Some get somebody strong guy, you know, to spin. I mean, it's a struggle to get out. He will yeah. block me many times until I finally scramble myself out. Right. You yep. know, like back is the same thing. Get someone that knows how to attack the back. Well, I mean, it's not easy to escape. There's no one I'm going to that direction that's going to get me out. No, it's a, okay. it's a constantly trying oh. to push this way. You turn and go that way. And then a, a series of movement that boom, then finally. Oh. Yeah, no, and I think know. like uh, this subject about specific training, it, it talks a lot about you because you were the only person in the planet who pretty much tapped everybody from mountain mm -hmm. with, with cross choke, which is yeah. the position you learned in the first class. And you are also one of the very few athletes, or maybe the only one as well, who has never got tapping in Jiu Jitsu pretty much, right? I think only yeah. Blue Belt yeah. Juvenile or something Juvenile, like that, right? Juvenile. But yeah. not in a Blue belt, adult, not a purple belt, not brown belt, not black belt. Yeah, that's but incredible. Because I always practice specific positions from okay. escape, like the triangle. Many times during many fights, I got caught in triangle, very tight. And I escape. Why? Because in training, I used to start with yep. a full lock oh. on triangle. Full okay. on. I mean, it's hell on earth to escape a full on on triangle. So you do ahead. specific trainings that start in the submission as well, or this is more like during the sparring? I used, to, I, I used to do everything. So the side control mountain back is almost like fundamental. Okay. That's like part of it. It has to be forever since I was a blue belt. Okay. That is, it, it was always there. Then you, know, you can add other things. Let's say turtle is very important to add as well. Not okay. attacking from turtle. Getting the back yeah. is very important. And you can be more specific in, in what, exactly what you want to practice. You know, like the guys, lasso guard, how do I pass you know, them getting stuck? Start on lasso guard and then see if you can develop a way okay. to, to, to pass from there. I mean, anything, deep half guard. Yeah. Let's start on deep half guard. Let's start on X guard. Yeah. And you know, in over and over training, it would, it would show you how comfortable you are in that position. If you're something that you want to progress, develop your game, or if you're something that, or that is not for me, I'm going to go do something else. Or when you get caught, at least you, you, you're aware of, okay, I have a direction. That's the way that usually I escape the most. That's yeah. what I'm gonna go. I'm not lost, you know. Got it. No, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. No, that's amazing. So, guys, Roger Gracie, the greatest of all times here. Mm -hmm. And the, guys, we have a mount attack uh, instructor at BGJ Fanatics with Roger, where he teaches all his secrets about mount attacks. So Make bad. sure to check that yeah. out. And thanks so much for joining. Was. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe, and to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.